Are you a little overwhelmed, feeling isolated, angry, frustrated, unacknowledged, or fearful? Do you find yourself wanting to retreat from the world? Then it's time to break down the barriers and say yes to yourself. Join me, Christine Clark, on Forging a Life to spark the ignition and put your life into drive. We'll cover how to ignite full circle success on your terms. You can forge through. Every episode, I share a life forging tip to spark your liberated and energized and profoundly satisfying life. It has never been a question of, do you have what it takes? It is only, are you willing to try? Forging a life is about you and our world. As each of us forge our unique destiny, we light the way for others igniting world healing transformation. Step into the work and make an effort. Trust yourself and the process of becoming. Forging a life starts now. Hello, everyone. I am Christine Clark. Welcome to Forging a Life. Are you lost? Are you feeling like every time you turn around, something's new? Something's different? Instead of expectancy, do you feel dread? Foreboding? Maybe you're frustrated because your carefully laid plans fall apart. Have you felt blindsided lately? What does it mean to expect things to be the way you thought they would be? You know, is it even worth trying? Can we ever expect, predict, or depend on anything? How can we anticipate or count on plans? Do you feel like you have no control? Is life tossing you off the path into the wilderness? Are you wondering why the social rules keep changing? Won't it be great to have a playbook if it was written in stone? What does it even mean to expect? to envision, to foresee. Well, I'm Christine Clark, and today on Forging a Life, Igniting Full Circle Success, we're going to get real with forging through expectancy. You know, when I look at my life now, I have to say that I am amazed at what I have. There is such a flow and ease that I never expected to have. I have my beautiful morning routine, where I get up and the first thing I do is drink a full bottle of water. I meditate. I get to go um, on a walk with my beautiful little Karen Terrier, Ginger, uh, for 20 minutes cross country. And things just flow. My partner relationship is solid. We are growing into a new um, space of being empty nesters and learning to reconnect with each other, have fun with each other like we never thought we would. Things just keep getting better. My sons have meaningful relationships with really great partners, and I have a community that I'm plugged into. I have clients in very meaningful and fulfilling work, and there's cash flow. Cash is coming in. We have enough to meet all the bills. We're able to do investments. We're able to do a little travel, and it's just a beautiful, beautiful place to be and look and say, wow, look at what this is. And for me, it's, I take time to try and appreciate that regularly now to really recognize what's happening. But I want you to know that it wasn't always that way. I didn't always have the ability to let go of disappointments. You know, early on in my entrepreneurial journey, I took everything as a personal indictment of my own value. There was um, a particular week, I was a beauty consultant with Mary Kay for 25 years, and I had a particular week where I had five parties on my books, which is really great. That's a good full week. And then one of the hostesses called and she canceled. And then another canceled her apartment appointment. And then another one canceled. All of the parties canceled. And I was absolutely devastated. And the question I was asked is, what's wrong with me? What am I doing wrong? I was absolutely crushed to the point where I was curled up on the floor in a ball, crying my eyes out at how everything had just gone fricking sideways. And why am I not able to be successful? Why am I not able to do this? And of course, all the the negative head talk came crashing down. And that was hard. But then the phone rang 
And it was a call by another hostess, my sixth hostess. And she was wondering where I was. There had been six parties on the books that week. And in my distress, in my being crushed over the cancellations, I had missed the remaining party. It was a total screw up. And now I was totally mortified. My professionalism as a businesswoman was called into question. My integrity as a reliable person was totally blown. And in my fragility at that point, that postponement and the judgment, I created a story that those hostesses didn't like me, that they thought my products were crap. They were buying, I was buying into this negative idea that was never actually real, that all these other people had judgments. And in that, I abandoned who I was. And I will tell you that the cancellations were nothing to that gut-wrenching feeling of having let myself down. To not show up as who I am with the last remaining person. It was a hard lesson. It was a turning point. Never again, never again was I going to allow what was happening to make me not be who I was. And it's a lesson I've learned and grown from. You see, we're at choice for what we take on. We decide the meaning that we make from each and every event in our lives. You know, you've heard the story, the saying that you know, all suffering comes from expectations. The first point I want you to grasp, what I want to cover today, is that if we don't have expectations, we would never do anything. We all have this mental framework of the world, both conscious and unconscious, of this is how the world works. You know, you flip a switch and lights come on. We expect that. The Smith puts the metal into the hot forge and gets it hot, 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 pulls it out, expects it to be squishy soft because it's so hot so that when he beats on it, it moves easily. We go to the car, we get in, we expect it to start. We go to the grocery store, we expect to have lots of stuff on the shelves and choices to get what we want, to get what we need. Our ability to make plans, to go for goals, is based on a certain level of expectation, a belief in how the world works. Don't stop having expectations. Don't stop moving in the direction of your dreams because that's what is needed to continue to move through life, to build something that you wanna have, to create this life of flow and abundance. It is very hard when our expectations are not met. But the only way to never have ex expectations not met, the only way to not ever have disappointment is to just stay home. Underneath the covers, eat marshmallows, never go out. You know, it's a worse fate to do nothing and be stagnant than it is to have occasional disappointment. So what are you missing out on? What kind of expansion or joy or love or opportunity is available to you that maybe you're not taking because you got a little gun shy? Because things kept happening that you didn't want to happen. Or you kept telling yourself stories about what is reliable and what isn't reliable. And so maybe we're backing away from life a little bit. Maybe we're holding ourselves down a little bit. And the big question is, what is that costing you? Where in your life are you not venturing out because you don't want to be disappointed? Where are you thinking about what you want to do but are not doing because maybe it's risky? What person has disappointed you in your life that maybe it's time to go back and reconnect with? You know, when you think about what it costs you, in those areas in your life where you're not choosing to reach out, where you are withholding because it's been disappointing, because we get fearful of that 
expectations not being met. When you think about the cost of that, what has it changed in your life? And then at some point you want to ask, have you had enough? Have you had enough of being held back? Have you had enough of not risking? Is there joy and love and opportunity out there that could be yours if we just tried one more time? And if that's you, for any reason, do me a favor and reach out. I'm Christine Clark at Sunglow Transformation. You can book a session, forgingalife.com. And remember that you are a choice, but you don't have to go it alone. If you have been held back in anything in your life for more than a few months, give yourself the gift of a conversation and we will find a way to move forward together. I guarantee you, I guarantee you, that's what it's all about. I think we're going to, I'm going to go ahead and move to a break. Um, I'm Christine Clark. Remember that you can be a part of the 1000 Project, moving people forward when you book a free coaching session at forginglife.com. You can remark on this episode to be included as the 1000. You can follow me on Instagram, on LinkedIn, on Facebook, both at Christine Clark and Sunglow Transformation. Um, Mark on the YouTube video. Your life forging tip is yet to come. We're going to include that in the next half of the show. And I'll be back in just a few minutes. Welcome back to Forging a Life, Igniting Full Circle Success. I am your host, Christine Clark. My website is forgingalife.com. We're talking about expectancy and getting through unmet expectations. You know, I absolutely love how the universe works. While I was preparing for this show, a song by Styx off the Paradise Theater album came on. And the song was, Nothing Ever Goes As Planned absolutely great tune and nothing ever goes as planned you know it's a hell of a notion we're so together we act so civilized and every time things that go wrong it's like we're still surprised it's like what yeah you know we've done our duty we have paid a fortune in our dues and still things don't always work out the jazz in that song, Nothing Ever Goes As Planned by Styx, is fun and energetic. And it speaks to me of a truth. Don't put too much weight on how plans roll out. It may not be what we prefer. And yet there are going to be gifts. There's going to be serendipities. There's going to be opportunities that present themselves if we look for them. In the second stage of the Forging Life program that I walk people through is preparation. And the preparation includes visioning. We create a five-year plan and then reverse engineer it to the present day for action steps. And I want to just give you a little piece of this to take with you because there's essential questions that I walk people through to claim their future vision. And one of those questions is so apropos to our conversation today that I want to share it with you. I really want to give this to you. So hope you are ready for this. The question is, what must I embrace? What must we embrace to bring the future that we are desiring, desiring to create into fruition? This is a key to forging through expectancy. It's allowing the universe to do its thing. Are there things that we are holding on to that prevent us from getting to where we want to go? Are there hurts? Are there disappointments? Are there ideas about who we are and what we're capable of that we just need to release? And then there's the pieces of embracing. Who are the people that we need to embrace? Who, what are the thought patterns we need to embrace? What are the abilities that we have that we want to make sure that we put out in the forefront on the top shelf and say, yes, 
this is my special gift and I can do it. Let's embrace your special gift that will carry you through. Think about that. What must I embrace? And when I think about that week as a beauty consultant, when I had all those mass cancellations, I had paid my dues. I had done everything I was supposed to do. I had reached out to people. I had made connections with strangers. I had given my business card out. I'd gotten their contact information back. I had reached out and followed up to set the appointments. I had just lavished um, the people that were to be hostesses and invite friends over with gifts and stayed in communication. I had done everything I was supposed to do. I had paid my dues. And yet the universe decided to toss in a few more dues so that I could toughen up, so that I could stop from putting my value into other people's baskets so that they would carry them around. It was the lesson that I had to learn in order to claim a future of abundance. Because when I put my value in what other people did or didn't do. I was, uh, you know, there, there was no grounding there, right? Um, I was going to just be beat to death by the hammer of life because you just, other people are going to operate and they don't think badly of you. They're just in their own stuff, right? So it was, it was a huge lesson to learn. And one of the things that I ended up giving up was making other people's decisions mean something about me. And what I also learned to embrace is the steps it takes to run the business, to continue to do the outreach, to get information from people, to set appointments, to show up. And that's the groundwork. That's the nuts and bolts that move forward and to build a business from On a recent trip, went to uh, Minneapolis to see my son and his partner and my very first grandchild. And there was a particular morning when we were going to go and meet them. And my husband and I thought we were meeting them for breakfast. And of course, they have a, a young infant. And I understand that it takes a lot of time to get, yeah, I need twice as long and three times as much stuff to get out the door when you have a little one. And so very relaxed about the time frame, but we finally went to this um, coffee shop that they wanted to meet us at. And when we got there, we realized the coffee shop is just a coffee shop. It, it's got great coffee and a few pastries, but it wasn't breakfast. And we were thinking breakfast. And so our expectations were not met. It was a little bit of a, a dicey start to the morning because it's like, okay, I'm a little bit hangry now. Um, had a pastry, got some good coffee, and waited for them to show up. And then they they showed up and we're thinking we're going to sit down and, and they go, no, we want to walk. Okay, so we take our coffee and we go for a walk. It was a rough start because our expectations were not what, was being planned or understood. It was simply a miscommunication. But I will tell you that the walk we went on in the city that we were in was beautiful. There was so much green space. There was water. It was a beautiful day. And so we went for this extended walk and we got to talk about this and that and life. And it was relaxed and it was beautiful. And um, part of the time my husband carried our little grandson um, and got to feed him a bottle. And the rollout from that was nothing that I could have ever predicted or expected. It was really the most beautiful morning and we spent a good time with them. We, were, we went out and we walked for probably two and a half hours and got to have great connection and relationship building. And I got to know uh, my son's partner better and they're wonderful people and it was fantastic. Sometimes things don't go the way we want, but I guarantee that there are serendipities. There are 
beauties, there is much to learn and grow from in those moments. And that's what you want to take with you. And you have to get past what didn't work out or wasn't working out to then reap the goodness that's there for you. If we would have hung on to the irritation of miscommunication, if we would have chosen to blame, me blame my husband, me blame my son, or them blame us for the miscommunication. I mean, there's all kinds of ways we could have made it uncomfortable, but we didn't because we hung in there and we let go of what had been disappointment and able to reap the wonderfulness of what is there. And that's important. And that's what forging through expectancy means, is to realize that things are not what you expect, but then to claim and pick up what is there um, for you. Because there is always, always, always something there for you. And quite often the universe will give you a little push or a little turn or a little disappointment just so that you could discover something that was meant for you. That's true. You know, today we're talking about the unpredictable nation, nature of expectation. It's the unpredictable nature of existence, really. So here is your life forging tip. We all get triggered when things do not pan out the way we want. Plans go sideways, people don't respond the way we expect, and we start to wig out. And when you feel that tightening up inside, when you recognize that you're being thrown off by what is or is not happening, I want you to stop. Take a deep breath and ask yourself this very critical question. What am I making this mean? Because the truth is that you are creating stories that are way beyond the evidence that's in front of you. You know, we are really good about projecting and fabricating tales of woe. So stop. Ask, what am I making this mean? Then answer the question. Give yourself the opportunity to chain, challenge that negative, a disempowering thought back away from the energy that says, this shouldn't be this way, and open up to what is possible now. Thank you for being here and being present with me today. Remember that expectations are normal and necessary. If you get caught up in unmet expectations, look for where there is things to embrace. Check in with yourself. What are you making the situation mean? opportunities abound. You have what it takes. I'm Christine Clark and I am here for you. My greatest desire is for you to flow through life in full circle success. Together, we will ignite your world. Email me at christine at sunglowtransformation.com. Book a session on forginglife.com. Follow me on LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook at Christine Clark and Sunglow Transformation. Until next time, keep foraging through. You have been listening to Forging a Life with me, Christine Clark, igniting full circle success. Tune in every second and fourth Tuesday at 9 a.m. on Transformation Talk Radio for more life forging tips to spark your liberated, energized, and profoundly satisfying life. As each of us forge our unique destiny, we light the way for others, igniting world healing transformation. It's never been a question of do you have what it takes? It's only are you willing to try? Schedule a complex Complimentary personal clarity session, visit forginalife.com. That's forginalife.com.